it's a new year ritual. The ball drops and millions resolve to drop a few pounds themselves. But to lose the weight, many this year are looking to a drug, not just a new gym membership. The market for these anti-obesity medications like Ozempic and Manjaro has exploded to $6 billion this year and could grow to $100 billion by 2030. Traditional weight loss companies getting in on the craze. Earlier this month, Weight Watchers announcing WW Clinic to prescribe the medications in tandem with its food tracking system. Competitors Noom and Octavia's parent company Medifast, both offering virtual health options to users to prescribe meds. So when people are making their New Year's resolutions list and saying, work out more, eat less, lose weight, save money, these drugs don't necessarily completely disrupt that list. It can be the same list. It's a false dichotomy to think, is it behavior or is it medications? That's just wrong. It's both behavioral programs have to serve as the basis of any effective treatment plan. Weight Watchers' most famous shareholder, Oprah Winfrey, recently revealed that even she has medication in her weight loss toolkit, despite some initial skepticism. I felt I've got to do this on my own because if I take the drug, that's the easy way out. Now, after Winfrey's decades-long weight loss journey, medication is just another part of her overall health regime. Michelle Carney is one of many hoping to make her longtime resolution stick in 2024 with the help of medication, diet, and exercise. Two years ago, my New Year's resolution was to lose 80 to 100 pounds, and I joined um, this all-women gym and had a personal trainer and was doing keto. I lost 40 pounds, and I couldn't get past that 40 pounds. With the help of ZetBound, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get there. But for many, it may not be time to cancel that gym membership just yet. The price tag for medication is still steep, about a grand a month without insurance. What is the ripple effect of this disruption? Are we going to see gyms closing and weight loss companies going out of business? Absolutely not. I, I don't think so. No, Expect a year of weight loss advertising, partnerships between wellness and medical companies, and a $75 billion industry facing the biggest disruption in its history. Already pill versions are in the works that could help lower costs for some of these drugs for users. Meanwhile, some companies are considering how the drugs will affect their business. ConAgra Foods has said it might consider changing portion sizes in the future. And Walmart is seeing customers who are filling their weight loss prescriptions at the retailer spending less in the grocery aisle. But experts say it's still a little too early to predict lasting changes. Christine, thank you very much. For more insight, Dr. Natalie Azar is here. We're so lucky to have you. So uh, this was sort of the talk of the table during the holidays, yes. at least in my family. Yeah. Who is a good candidate looking into the new year, perhaps for a reset? Yeah, so when we talk about these medications, first of all, I think it's important to remember what is approved for type 2 diabetes, what is approved for actually for weight loss. But if we're talking about medicines for weight loss, we're talking about individuals who have a BMI, let's say, of 30 or greater, and individuals who are maybe overweight but have uh, other risk factors for heart disease. But just to review, remember that Ozempic is semaglutide, Manjaro is terzepatide. These two are both approved for type 2 diabetes. But then we have their sister drugs or their counterparts. Wagovi is the same ingredient as Ozempic, but it's approved for weight loss. And Zepbound is the same medication that is Manjaro, but it is approved for weight loss. So let's talk about the strategies here for so many yeah. people who are now beginning these weight loss drugs or plan to as they head into the new mm -hmm. year. Can you eat the same way? What do you have to do differently? What should your strategy be? Right. And so and I just want to call attention to this. We, oh, sorry. We, we sort of, we, we sort of, I, I, I got excited we sort here. of answered. No, no, no. We, we kind of answered both in, in, in one. I just want to remind everybody that for for an able, in order for you to be able to get the medicines for weight loss specifically, you need to either be uh, obese or which is a BMI over 30, or be overweight and have another risk factor for heart disease. You need disease. to have certain categories. Exactly. Okay. Now, when we talk about what to do and what not to do, the experts will say the the number one thing to, to remember is that anything that upset your stomach mm -hmm. before taking those medications will also do so when you start to take these medicines. They slow down how quickly the food is moving through your gut. And so things like red meat, soda, 
alcohol, especially things that are ultra processed, have a high sugar content, really are gonna be difficult to digest. The things to do, one of the biggest things is to go really slowly, meaning that you wanna start with a low dose, you wanna increase the dose very slowly, you also wanna make sure that you're increasing the water content of the things that you are eating, and that is gonna help you a lot. A lot of experts will say that it's also very similar to what you do, for example, when you're pregnant, that you wanna eat a lot of smaller meals throughout the day. And also, if you take a walk after you eat, that also helps. A lot of people will say also to enlist the help of a nutritionist or some experts mm -hmm. to help you handle those side effects. So we've talked about these drugs a lot yes. this year, but now with more and more people considering them, do you have to stay on them forever? Say it works for you. Is it then a thing you stay on indefinitely? Right. And so I think, I'm not sure, we think we have a graphic on this, but um, unfortunately, um, most individuals will probably regain some weight. The, the number to think about is about two thirds of the weight you lost. You are very, very likely to regain as when the medicine is stopped. Yeah. These are not medicines that are resetting you for life. Mm. I think it's important that people understand that this that these medications are never really meant to be taken without doing appropriate diet and exercise interventions also. If you think about it very simply, there's two pathways in our brain. One pathway says eat less, store less, and the other pathway kind of triggers you to want to eat more and store more. And it's basically an imbalance of those things that contributes to obesity in a lot of people. It's more okay. of a neurological issue than, than behavioral, certainly. And I think if you think these keeps you, those things in mind, you can see how these work together in harmony to actually help you lose weight. All right, New Year's resolutions. Not a panacea, but can certainly help exactly. for the right people. It's nice to see you, Dr. Nice Azar. Thank you, guys. you so much. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.